Spoiler warning, I do say some things which could be considered spoilers for Bill and Ted 3, so here's your spoiler warning. Bill and Ted 3 came out just a little while ago now, maybe a month ago now, and it is the threequel to Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, which is a 1989 movie about two teenage boys who are like, ah, this guy from the future comes and tells them, you're gonna save the world someday, um, so you have to pass your history exam. And the first movie is about them collecting historic figures and bringing them all to the present, which is the 80s, to give an oral report on what they would think of their town. Uh, and they succeed, and it's a really fun movie. And then they made a sequel in 91, um, where Bill and Ted return and they, like, get murdered by evil robot versions of themselves and go to hell and then go to heaven, and it's just a wild ride. Um, and so the the threequel came out 2020, uh, in which Bill and Ted are old, uh, <laughs> and they have adult daughters, and it's really good. I really enjoyed it, so I decided to do a big fan art, um, and that is what you're gonna watch happen. And I'm wearing a wig, <laughs> I'm wearing a disguise, which will be revealed why I am later on in the video. You will see. So enjoy watching me draw this fan art. Now that I'm drawing, it's time to talk about the movie. Um, for me, the, the movie is only ever as good as its characters. I think that's the way it is with lots of stuff. Uh, for me, my favourite was Bill. And this is coming from somebody who's seen like mostly Keanu movies, but it's only because Alex Winter did not have as big of a movie career as his co-star. Bill is... I would say of the two, like, the one that looks the most like his character that we remember from the previous movies, he slipped into the role, like, perfectly. Um, he not only has the costume, but the mannerisms, and it doesn't seem, like, stupid. Obviously the characters themselves are pretty stupid, but I didn't feel like, oh, this is really obnoxious watching this older guy act like, whoa, dude! Because I don't think they take it too far in this. Like, they don't use as many silly words. They're just a bit like, okay, this is a reasonable progression on from the way they were in the start. Um, Bill being, like, the first name in Bill and Ted, he kind of seems like more of the leader of the two of them. But I would say this is because Ted seems like the more stressed out one, the more beat down one. Uh, Keanu in the movie, he's beardless and he just looks a bit tired and sad and I think that's in keeping with how Ted is feeling. Um, and while uh, Bill's dad, who, they both have bad dads, but Bill's dad isn't present after the first movie, um, Ted's dad and his, his brother as well are both in Bill and Ted 3 and they kind of make a point of like across movies that both of them have pretty bad dads, bad relationships with their dads, um, especially Ted because his dad is around so much. His dad in this movie is saying like, ah, you didn't go to heaven, you didn't go to hell, you didn't time travel, all of that is made up, you're delusional, which is just a terrible thing to hear from your father. Um, but it shows a really good contrast then to how good like Bill and Ted are as parents. Um, you know, their, their children want to help them, they don't see their dads as an obstacle the way the dads were always positioned as an obstacle in the first two films. I think it's just really good to see them together again. Knowing that the actors have been friends, like, the whole time, I personally think it's always more fun to see somebody, like a fictional character that you really enjoyed, in the olden days, not rebooted, so recast with a younger actor, but to see the same actor just old. Like when going through the Evil Dead movies, I'm always like, I'm so here for old Bruce Campbell, you know? That being said, there was this choice, this choice to recast the princesses to be played by actresses who I, th I think are at least a decade younger than Mr. Reeves and Mr. Winter, which I just think is... Mm, maybe not good, considering the princesses are supposed to be the same age as Bill and Ted. It's like, well, why can't we see two older women? Um, obviously, the princesses have been different in every movie. The actresses who played them in the first film did not play them in the second. And it's like, well, why even keep on the second then? Clearly, 
there's not as much uh, investment in the characters. They're not the main characters, they aren't the ones in the title. Um, but it does feel like a disservice. Uh, that said, the, the actresses, the new ones, they do a really nice job. I always like to see Jayma Mays, I think she's adorable. And they do really good, like, princess accents. Um, so that's good. I just think the film could have tried a little bit harder to emphasise that they needed to be part of the band as well. Um, I did like their style. They dressed really, like, everybody was wearing sneakers, I think. Maybe one of the princesses was wearing sneakers. <laughs> That's just fun. Um, and then, of course, Little Bill and Ted, as they called them in um, Booger's Journey, but now they're grown up and they're called Billy and Thea. Again, they're secondary characters, so they don't really have much of a personality individually, but as a duo, which it, um, is fine, I think, um, because they're secondary characters. As a duo, they, they kind of have the same core as Bill and Ted, which is that they're earnest. Uh, they want to do the right thing and they want to help. So their whole thing is that they go through time and they gather all of the historical musicians so that there'll be a backing band for their dads who are going to perform the song. The song that will save the universe. Um, I think they're great. Um, sometimes uh, if something I like, because I'm not a fan of change, if something I like is like I have introduced a teenage a teenage son or daughter, what have you. I'm like, I don't really want to see this. Uh, I didn't realize that they, they like aren't teenagers. Um, I think at one point Captain Logan says, yeah, they're adults. They're kind of not doing anything. And I was like, they're 29. Samara Weaving is 28. And Bogus Journey came out in 1991. So it could be conceivable that they're just almost 30 and that's just how they look and act which is totally fair considering who their dads are um my sister and i in particular found them really relatable the way they dress is great um and the fact that at the wedding party they seem to relate more to the like clearly six-year-olds just like playing doing a conga line with them it's like okay mood um i would rather just conga line with a six-year-old than drink alcohol at a wedding party a yeah, really, I really liked them. And then um, the other kind of minor characters, obviously, that was the backing band with the musicians. I think it was really fun that in the case of the musicians, it was like, oh, well, we can't get this musician because they won't join us unless we get this musician. So they had to keep traveling further and further back and finding the musical inspiration of each musician that they met. So with Jimi Hendrix, they were like, oh, I want Louis Armstrong. So they go and get Louis Armstrong and then they keep going further back. And uh, there's a couple of just really nice scenes, I think, where the musicians are playing for each other and then they're admiring each other and they're like, OK, yeah, yeah, yeah let's do this. That's really nice. Um, Kelly, uh, the daughter of Rufus. I'm not personally attached to George Carlin. I never saw him in anything except Bill and Ted, um, except for... That one scene in Dogma, that's the only scene I've seen, the Buddy Christ one, that's all I've seen. Um, yeah, I'm not personally attached to George Carlin, but I was still pretty emotional just seeing the hologram scene, and it was so badass, um, Kristen Schaal walking out in that amazing outfit with the cowboy boots and taking off the sunglasses and being like, greetings, gentlemen, and just <sighs> excellent. Um, I really like Kristen Schaal, I think she looked so, so good in this movie. Her hair thingy, fantastic. Um, and in that vein, yeah, the costumes... Um, Really, really, really like the costumes. Obviously, because I'm, I put a lot of effort into drawing Billy and Thea in the front of this. Um, they were by a lady called Jennifer Starzik. She has some interviews, which I was reading. Um, I will link the one I read. She was talking about how they came up with each outfit and how the actors kind of had in mind what they'd like, especially in the case of Alex for Bill. Um, Keanu was a bit more... My John Wick mind, maybe I should wear a suit. And Starzik said that they were looking at Wayne Coyne, the Flaming Lips frontman guy. And I can kind of see that. I can definitely see that knowing now. But to be honest, when I saw the first set pictures, I was like, oh, Ted is literally wearing that outfit that Amy Santiago wears all the time. And then one time Boyle comes into the bullpen and he's wearing the same outfit. And she's like, why does it look better on you? And I'm like, that is Ted's outfit. Uh, <laughs> the interview does have a lot of reasoning as to why they chose that Ted outfit in particular, so I totally see why. 
I was worried, like, oh, there's no smiley faces on his look. Um, but as you watch the movie, you're like, oh, okay, no, they did put some smiley faces into his costuming, into the guitar strap, which I drew. So that made me like, oh, everything's fine. Billy and Thea's costumes, obviously, totally my favorite because it's pretty similar to how me and my sister dress. Like tacky Hawaiian shirts, those mesh tops. I've been getting really into, not that I've gotten a chance to wear them recently. Um, chunky boots, culottes, it's all great. They dress just, uh, it was it was tailored specifically to my likes. Um, and the dress that Princess Elizabeth is wearing during the wedding scene, I was obsessed with that too. The, the pattern on it, beautiful. As for the stuff that actually happens in the movie, not just how I feel about the characters, um, I think it was really, really funny. There wasn't really any point where I was like, oh, this is dumb. Um, as you sometimes think that maybe it will be if you're watching a three call that's made 30 years later, but it was really funny, like, throughout. I think the best part was <laughs> the couple's counselling scene where they keep turning to their wives and being like, I and Bill love you very much. Uh, <laughs> that's great. Um, although it does make me think, like... Well, clearly Bill and Ted are in love with each other, and maybe they married these two princesses who were sisters because they were like, ah, we can unite our families this way. Um, and the princesses maybe don't super like the idea of being in this quadruple. You wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be a quadruple with my sister. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, as somebody who's like, Bill and Ted are in love, the resolution here was like, eh, all right. Um, but that scene... Very, very funny. And any scene with the future Bills and Ted's, absolutely crazy. Uh, <laughs> um, the English accents were insane, I think. What's with this movie in English accents? How everybody's trying so hard. Even Ke Keanu, he really gave it his all. Um, if you watched the Dracula movie that he's in, my god. My god, he's not good at an English accent there, but I think he, he worked on it. He didn't have as many lines in the accent as Mr. Winter did, so... But they are both, I think they are both very technically English, you know, like either by uh, Keanu's mum or like I think Alex Winter was born in England. Whatever. Um, lots and lots of funny. I think the looks, again, of <laughs> future Bills and Ted's, the, the multiple versions, very, very funny. I, I think I can tell that the, the costume designers definitely had a blast coming up with those looks. The different, the different Ted facial hairs, just absolutely, oh, atrocious. But it does mean that he cannot, absolutely cannot be confused with John Wick, which is a good thing, because Ted is not John Wick, and he could never be John Wick. Apart from funny, there were some bits that were pretty emotional. I would say the part where they go and meet old, old Bill and Ted, like the furthest future Bill and Ted, that was like, oh, what, I'm... I'm, like, tearing up. It seems like such a weird thing, that like, talking to themselves. But in that moment, I was like, well, maybe as Bill is addressing old Bill and telling Bill how he feels about him and stuff, it's like, oh, maybe they're talking from the actor to the character. Because, obviously, for both of them, it was, like, their first big starring role, the roles that made them famous, and while it kind of went different ways for both of them, Bill and Ted is really important to making them who they are. And I was just like, oh god! And I'm getting quite tricked up just thinking about it. And then uh, another part where I was like, oh, my emotions was obviously the part where they're all waiting to do the gig, and they're like, oh my god, ah, the gig, We're holding the USB, it says Preston and Logan, and they have been sort of alluding to that the whole time, they don't say wild stallions perform the song that will save the world they do say preston logan perform the song that will save the world so you kind of get the hint and you might say it's predictable but i think it's fine like there's nothing wrong with predictable for them to be like oh the song the performance that we have to put on is you guys so they look at their daughters and they're like it's you and i'm like oh my god it's them oh they they're like it's just nice it's just nice, isn't it? Uh, I was reading a review by a guy called Devin Gordon, and um, where's the quote? What did he say? Uh, he said, I assume he's Americans when I do it in an American accent. It's about what happens when Bills and Ted's and Billy's and Thea's are nurtured as kids, encouraged to hurl themselves into their passions, and taught to be excellent to one another along the way. That's the journey this time finding your purpose in life 
at accepting that it might be more humble than the High Council had led you to believe that your true purpose might be to serve someone else's purpose. Which I think is a really nice, like, boomer perspective. And obviously, like, if you're a, somebody who is Alex Winter and Keanu Reeves' age, and you were watching this movie when you were a teenager, uh, the original movies, when you were a teenager, that might be how you feel, or that might be the lesson that you have to learn. I, as somebody in my 20s, you know, watched Bill and Ted and was like, they're in love, aww. Um, and now I'm just like, it's just nice to see old men still in love. But I think that's a really nice review. I will also put that in the video description to read, because I think it's a really nice perspective on the movie. I haven't been reading too many reviews because I like to keep my opinion untainted by people who are like, this is a terrible movie! So when I see that kind of, like, article title, I'm just like, nope, I'm not gonna watch that. Oh, I forgot to mention Dennis. I didn't draw him in this, I was really running out of steam, but Dennis was really funny. Dennis Caleb McCoy, oh my god. What a great, what a great character. I, I kind of, I kind of hated the look. I was, I saw a preview picture. I was like, oh my God, what is that? And I still kind of think that when I look at him, but he's so funny that I just have to forgive him. And death. That was a, that was another really good, let's bring this character back. Oh, death is so funny. This is so much funniness. So much, so much goodness. So much funniness. Anyway, it looks like I'm getting to the end of the drawing. So let me just take you through everything I've drawn. Let's think about the drawing now and not just the movie. I hope you've been enjoying watching the drawing happen. So I was thinking of it like a poster. We've got the, obviously we've got the Wild Stallions logo, which as I was drawing, I was like, ah oh, man, but it's not the Wild Stallions. It's Preston Logan. So I put Preston Logan at the start. It's kind of like Preston Logan featuring Wild Stallions, 7.17 PM, MP46. So we have Billy and Thea, they're conducting. Um, I did base the pose off a screenshot I saw in the trailer where they're like back to back, they're jamming out, and I was like, I'm feeling this moment. And the screen direction there with Billy first, then Thea, and there's their outfits, and they look fantastic. And then, of course, the dads, and I wanted them to be a bit stepped back so the colours are more pastelized. Um, they're rocking out, having a good time. I gave Bill his excellent adventure guitar strap because it's rainbow. And now we're going into the backing band, which had a lot of fun just trying to cram in as many characters as I can. We love a full drawing. We've got Joanne and Elizabeth. I gave them crowns. Uh, we have Death, Jimi Hendrix, um, baby Louis Armstrong, the caveman lady whose name I think was Grom. And I hear she's a real drummer. Um, you know, they're jamming out, they're having a good time. Here's everybody. Kid Cudi. Uh, they, oh no, it's it's Kid Cudi. Um, he's doing his thing. I think he was a great addition. The station part, I was like, oh hell yeah! Station, but also not horrifying. God, I, I hate the station puppet. Um, and Mozart, Ling Lun. I also included Ted's dad because he is part of the band, or at least, you know, the performance. Um, as much as I don't care for Ted's dad, I love the actor. And I also snuck in me and my brother because we recorded a video. Um, I'll show it. Here it is. Uh, we recorded a video to submit to the end credits. Um, I put on a pink wig. I, I gave my brother the top and we spent 20 minutes putting all the paper on the wall. We just mimed playing the instruments. He can play guitar. Um, but he was just pretending. And then we were in the movie. We were there in the credits just for a second. At the timestamp of uh, 1 hour, 24 minutes, and 3 seconds, you see us in the bottom left? There we are. Uh, so proud. Um, so yeah, that's the entire image. I'm really, really happy with it. Overall, I, I love to draw colours, people having fun, I love to draw funky outfits. Thea's shirt is my favourite part of the whole thing. And here it is! Thank you so much for watching me draw it, if you want to see the full full version and zoom in at your leisure. I've put it on my Tumblr, which is at Really Hardy Draws. I'll put it on my Instagram later. And it took me about four-ish, five-ish hours. I, I sort of paused in between, so I'm not sure exactly how much. And um, yeah, there it is. I tweeted it to some of the cast and creatives, but I have like no followers on Twitter. I don't think anybody's going to see it. Um, <laughs> I hope they do. It would be really nice if they did. Um, yeah. There we go. The wig was because I wanted to look the same as I did in the credits. Um, and it's kind of fun to have hair because I usually don't, but I am growing my hair. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. Um, you will see me if there's another one. Thank you. Bye!